<sighs> greetings, greetings, greetings. This is Lisa, and uh, welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays. Thank you for being here where transformation for a healthier you begins. I know that life is the greatest storyteller. And no matter where and what you are doing and what you are going through, sick or well, despair or in wonder, stress or relaxed, there's always more beyond the condition of where we are at this very moment. So through hypnotherapy and stress management, we help you achieve your desired goal. And I am so happy to be here with you. Hi, Zartik. Hi, Ida. Hope you had an incredible Easter and great celebrations. Today, today's message is about distress. How we distress, how we let go, and what do we do? Actually, it's a question. What do you do when you're under a lot of stress? What is the your go-to either habit or what do you do when you feel stressed? I mean, go ahead. Just share what you do when you feel stressed. Um, some of my clients, when they feel stressed, just like last week I had, uh, I had a client who literally bites bites his nails to a point that is like bl becomes bloody some people open the refrigerator and they just stand there and grab anything that looks um the colors are enticing like red and yellow and or ice cream or anything that it's fattening some people go for cookies some people smoke and so I wanted to know, thank you, Zartik John. I want to know what you do when you feel stressed. Because one of the culprits of all this ease is not knowing how we cope with stress, if that makes sense. Oh, uh, let me see if my volume is up. Ah, there we go. Can you hear me better now? Okay, so that's one of the things that I work with a lot is helping and teaching my clients, giving them the tools and techniques to de-stress. So when someone is feeling stress and in the past they used to open the refrigerator, I mean, I've got a client who came in and it was like, can you hypnotize me not to go to the refrigerator late at night and I'm like okay so what we do is find out what is the trigger that triggers this person get stressed especially and his thing was late at night and the interesting part is when a man says that and I'm not saying categorizing men or women, but it's mostly women who are emotionally going to refrigerator and men do the smoking and the drinking and everything. That's my, that's been in the past my clients. So when I have uh, someone asking me to hypnotize them not to go to refrigerator, my question becomes, what triggers you late at night? that sends you to the place that you must have something to fill your need internally, emotionally, by food. So it's not hypnotizing you not to go to the refrigerator, but it's working with you, tapping within your subconscious to find out not only the triggers, but what has been your pattern in the past as a younger version of you that used to go to the refrigerator when something was wrong or when something stressed you. So his stressors most of the time was late at night. 
and he was saying he lives alone that there is nothing that it's triggering him it's not about a dog it's not about a wife it's not about children so and it's he doesn't bring work home but he feels most stressed late at night after 11 o'clock after doing the work we found the pattern the pattern of the little boy the pattern of little boy that he used to go to the refrigerator and what that meant you want to know what it was i'll tell you not giving away my client it's the most interesting thing that his older brother used to work a graveyard shift and when he would get home he would go and grab something and sit and eat so he would see his older brother stressed and upset or overwhelmed or tired and he would wake up and go and sit with his brother and by doing that he had created a pattern not realizing that it was not stress that it was this comfort of him being with his brother would de-stress his brother and he had created subconsciously this pattern of eating late at night bingo so in two sessions in two sessions we tap into our subconscious mind which is the reservoir of all the information all the information of this is that's what i like to call it this is so does that make sense i got out by clothes i go out by clothes hey you go shopping all right zarti goes shopping another person goes eat ah hold on a second okay i had music in the background and it was affecting my thinking and i was not completely here so what do you do i hope that makes sense about how we develop certain ways how we develop certain habits so the other day uh, i posted something after my event and it was absolutely beautiful if you missed it it was healing it was amazing in a way if you want to see some of the pictures you can go to my 3e event page and i will put the link over here and when i posted that about heal within someone made a comment and said how do we heal within so here's the thing hi sanaz what is heal within what is healing within I believe healing within is to tap within ourselves to become comfortable with all that we are and if there is a dis-ease a discomfort a habit or a behavior that we no longer want or it's not affecting us it's not enhancing our life it's not enhancing who we are we change it we modify it we edit it Here's why, because we can never delete. We can never delete any part of our life, none of our experiences. If we, I'll take it for me. Um, been divorced for the longest time, over two decades. And when someone talks about divorce, it's if it is new if they are going through it if they are in it and they're thinking about divorce it's not so much the divorce it's all uh, the emotional and mental stress about wanting to get out of that relationship that causes more duress on our body on our psyche on our mental being so when a relationship is so bad that one person says I've done everything and I can no longer stay here because it's no good for me 
It's no longer good for me. It's got, it's creating more pain than the work I'm doing. I'm not saying divorce is a good thing, but what I'm saying is if being together is worse, then we must find ways of resolution, of separating. And please, let's not make the children the excuse. The, so they are not the excuse that underneath it, it creates more resentment that I stayed because of you, I stayed because of this, or I stayed because of that. In a way, we are dissing who we are and putting the blame and the guilt on someone else. The hardest thing to do is make the choice to break up a family. It's the hardest thing to do. It's not easy. Yet, if we are creating more poison, it's either in a divorce of a family or a divorce of partnership it's a divorce of business it's all divorce sometimes a friendship that goes bad it's it's an emotional divorce of so many years and i no longer want to talk to you it's the void it's the pain so many rather numb the feeling than go through it in order to come through healthier. So the pain, the stress, the anxiety, the difference between um, Worry and concern. I've talked about this so many times. Worry is something that has not happened. It's something that we worry about, and then that worry in itself becomes overwhelming, and then we get consumed in the thought of what is overwhelming us, and then it becomes overweighing us. And that becomes worse, creating that loop of anxiety. If that thing that it's worrying us, if we separate it and say, hmm, I'm already worried about something that has not even occurred, it's in the future, and I'm creating all that. If we shift it, a simple shift. Hello, Michael. Hi, Andre. Hi, Sanaz. If we shift that into a concern, a concern that I have this habit or I have this behavior or there is something happening and I am concerned about it, that means, ah, now I can find a resolution for it. Now I can find a solution for it. That means I can now take control and do something about it. Whereas worry, we have absolutely no control and it's not a reality yet. So instead of being present, we get consumed into the future and we forget all about the present of where we are and how we feel. So when I work with my clients, I help them become very real and instead of constantly talking about the future, what, what, what if, what if, should have, could have, or what if this happens, what if, it's like, calm down. Let's come right here. Let's be real. What is happening now? How do you feel at this moment? What can we do with what we have at this moment? Right? So. Hypnosis, there's two ways of doing it. There is this, um, if you have seen it, there's people who are hypnotized on stage. Oh, and there is, uh, hmm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. And there is also the hypnotherapy that I do, which is um, 
the clinical aspect, the therapy part. I'm thinking because I just saw Michael Mesmer online right here. Oh my God. Um, hello, Michael. Let's see. Um, I'm going to do something I've never done. I don't know if I can do this. Um, how do I? Let's see. How do I add? I'm going to invite Michael Mesmer. Michael, may I invite you online so that um, we can talk about hypnosis and different modalities of hypnosis for everyone? Everyone hears about me doing hypnotherapy as a therapy. Uh, it would be good for us to come together. Let's see. Does this work? Ooh. I thought I invited you. Okay. How do I bring you? Okay. How do I bring you live? Okay. Michael, how do I bring you live? God, I wish I could. I knew how to bring you live and for us to join. <laughs> okay. Does anybody know how you can help me? Anyone in here? I would love to bring Michael Mesmer online and see how we can do this. Uh, <laughs> okay. I'm not sure either. Okay, I wanted to bring, are you on your iPhone or are you on your phone or are you are you on a computer, Michael? Okay. Ah. Okay, I have to learn all this. I am not technically savvy about this. So, let's see. It, how do I do this? It says... Swip until you see the live viewers. Select the viewer you want to go live. In invite go live. And I don't know how to invite go live. Okay. <laughs> We're all wondering how we can do this. I have invited Michael on. Anyhow, I will figure this out. Uh, okay. All right. Okay, I'm not figuring it out. I don't know how to do this. Oh, no, I know. So, ladies and gentlemen, my bad for not knowing how to do this. But what I can do is, Michael, do you mind if you share some stuff if, an, if I ask and people can see your response until I figure out? So, the difference between stage hypnosis and uh, therapy is I believe, oh my God, Michael, I wish I could just do something. It says swipe and bring that person on. And I'm, I don't know how to swipe. <laughs> Show video cast and, okay. I Googled, I Googled and Google says, live video broadcast. Swipe left until you see live viewers. I did. And then it says invite to go live. So I don't know how to do this. Swipe left. Swipe left. Okay. My bad. I thought I can do this. So Ladies and gentlemen, my apologies. And this is what happens. So, was this stressful? I think it could be stressful for someone who's very self-conscious. And this, to me, is the least of stressful things that there is. Why? Because faux pas in life happen. And I can call this as a blooper. And my bad for wanting to do something as an impromptu 
and not being prepared or know how to do it, even though I just Googled it. But what do I do with this? I take this as a lesson to be more prepped. I take this as a lesson to be more aware of when I invite someone, how do I do it with more grace? Because if I am to bring and show you grace, I have to do this with grace as well. But bloopers in life happen. There's always a glitch in life. Even when we think we are quite prepared, something can go haywire right then. So what do we do? The number one technique is what I was doing is I was turning this into a faux pas, uh, making light, and instead of getting angry, I was becoming more playful. Because if I can add just a tad of joy, just a tad of playfulness, and yes, a little bit of a grace, a little bit of my personality, and apologize profusely, then it's done. It's done. I embraced this very moment, the thought and idea that I wanted to do something. This is the perfect experience of how we deal with stress. After this is done, I'm going to perhaps contact uh, Michael Mesmer and apologize again, which I don't need to do. But here's the thing. Michael Mesmer is the number one state hypnotist that I know. He is called the phenomenal person that there is. And this week, I will find a way to go live with Michael Mesmer for you to get to feel his essence, the power. And why am I bringing this up? Because next week, this time, we are going to be together at our 30th conference, 30th anniversary for our hypnotherapy conference that is happening in Glendale, California. I am honored and humbled to be serving as uh, on the board, the executive board with Michael Mesmer, Timothy Torrio, Gabe uh, Gibson, and uh, Zolita, uh, Zolita, plus John Butler, and uh, I believe that's it. It's the five of us, or the six of us. And we are bringing the hypnotherapy conference here in Glendale. If any of you is interested to know more about hypnosis, hypnotherapy, if you have any inkling of seeing a hundred and more hypnotherapists in one room. It is our continued education, so many modalities and experts in hypnosis that are gonna be under one roof. It's like not only we're doing the workshops and everything, and I am honored and humbled to be one of the presenters. Michael Mesmer is going to be one of the presenters. Timothy Trujillo is going to be doing a whole workshop on pain, managing pain. So, and John Butler, our president, is going to be doing a whole workshop on its own. Yes, for that, you have to be a hypnotherapist to be in a conference, but there are so many who are signing up to be a part of this conference who are not hypnotherapists, but have an interest to come and learn and sit in our presentations, which is, uh, you can come and join. For that, I can also put the link and invite you to come. Also, it's the art, hypnosis is not only a heart, 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 yes, heart. It's a science. 
science of delving deeper into the reservoir, which I call the subconscious mind, and how we bypass our critical analyzing, criticizing uh, critical factor that analyzes and judges and criticizes, bypassing that in order to make that change, the transformation, to go in. If I can hypnotize myself and have a root canal and numb my gums locally, it's localizing each tooth, each gum, and we can do so much. We do hip replacements, knee replacements, hypnobirthing that I work with my clients to have easy childbirth. We know epidural and everything. It's truly managing pain, working with our cancer patients and working with trauma. Those are the things that we do. It's not only the nail biting and the eating and everything. We do deep work. It is a science and an art. And in the medical field, there is a code for hypnotherapy. So when I have a nurse that comes over here because she's under a lot of stress and duress, she submits that and gets reimbursed. Not everyone does that. But you see, there are parts outside of California that in hospitals, they have a hypnotist working with a doctor to help them manage pain and overcome pain. Why am I saying that? Because the culprit being stress and dis-ease is what I'm talking about. From birthing to menopause to habits and behaviors all the way to managing pain and finding ease within. That's how we heal. So today we came together as I have come to find my tagline for Heal Within that is truly helping you feel better and transform to a better you to help you feel better and transform your life. Every single day, in every way, you have the power to tap within yourself and take control. They say everything is a choice. What we choose and what we choose to do with our choice. Instead of worry, we become more concerned, so we resolve. Instead of getting angry when something happens, there is a glitch, there is a faux pas. I can get angry and throw stuff or anything. You know, when someone cuts in front of you and you get angry and you honk, you can turn that around and for that one snap out of it that's a good technique something i also teach and help embed it in some clients and say when you think that you are just going out of control remember snap out of it and every time you do this it becomes a great trigger it reminds you it's time to snap out of it and shift. So perhaps you can use this tool also. Not only it helps us find a tune, but it can also have another meaning to help us snap out of something that we are going downwards. I hope today's segment, the Heal Talk Tuesday today, was beneficial to you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being present. Thank you for watching this. If you believe this session was beneficial to you, share it. 
and let me know what you would like me to talk about. What part of science or the art of healing would you like me to talk about? And I will bring it to you. So, hello, Raymond. Hi, Seta. How are you? You know, here is something else. Dealing with loss. Dealing with a loss of loved one is another stress factor that it hits home so hard. We talked about divorce, divorcing either from a family, from a partner, from work. What does that mean? It's a loss. We mourn the loss of the love. We mourn the loss of that relationship, what started, what we think started with love, what started with joy, what started with good deed or thoughts and how it goes the wrong way. In life, so many paths so many of our paths that we are walking on, the journey that we are on, it's not always this way. Sometimes it separates. And I think it separates also when one person grows and one person wants to excel and another person either chooses not to come up or their feelings change. And this is mostly in work or um, in partnership. My grandmother, going back to grandma, going back to grandma, she used to say when two people came together when they were getting married, and I think it goes over the gamut of all relationships, she would say, it's not staring at each other's eyes that shows the devotion and love but it's staring at the same goal and together walking towards that. Stare at that goal and walk together. Okay? So I thank all of you for being, you figured out that you have to invite a friend to join the video before you start broadcasting. Ah, okay. So I can go off and if you are willing, you can, Go live, and in, uh, I can go live and invite you before we start. Is that good? Okay. I'll go off right now. Not off, but sign out. Thank you very much for all of you being on. And let me see if I can do this and come back on. Until the next time, I bid you goodbye. Thank you for being here. It's time to always evoke, embrace, and evolve.